if you could make a phone call to the 20 year old Chris, um, what would you tell him? I think what might have been worthwhile to explain to myself at 20 is to recognize that every single person you meet is struggling. I didn't know that then. You tend to see other people as completely formed individuals. I still do sometimes. But to recognize that everybody you meet, every single one of them, no matter how expensive their suit is or, or how um, serious their expression is, they are uh, looking for significance. They are trying to uh, do the best they can and they fail regularly. And, and they're, they're you know, within their own particular battle of, of their own life. And so cut them some slack for that. Don't, don't let them off the hook, but recognize the, uh, the shared nature of being a, a human being and, and let people be themselves, make some allowances for them, treat people a little more kindly as a result. And so you take these pictures and now you, you, know, you pull the little chip out of the camera and put it in your zippered up pocket so it doesn't float away. And by the end of the day, you've kind of got a whole bunch of those chips. You got like the whole world in your pocket waiting for you to truly look at it. And there is some magnificent, unexpected, um, intimate view of the world. And now what do you do with that? And the beauty now of the space station and social media is that I could just go and honestly write what I was thinking and hit send and then just turn it loose to anybody who might also be curious about the world. And it was delightful to see the reaction, to see how many people, uh, millions by the, by the time we landed, who were also delighting in what that technological invention allows us to see about ourselves. So hopefully we're all students of the human condition, whether we mean to be or not. And, and as we get a little older, we gain a little perspective. I think what we're truly getting at is, um, is a collective understanding of where we are and what it means. And the where we are is, is the part that we can share the best. What it means is, is an individual choice. But the more people you meet, the more you understand what battles people are fighting, the more you see the commonality of the human experience itself. But then the real question, of course, is, if you do feel that maybe something has enlightened you a little bit, or if you've had a thought that most people have, have not, do you just have a secret smile? Or do you, do you try and maybe share it with someone you love or write it down or take a picture? And I, I think shared understanding is, is what empowers us more than anything. To try and actually see the world in its totality, uh, it's virtually impossible. Maybe we can see uh, you know, a documentary program or we can read a travel book or we can look at a coffee table book or we'll get on an airplane and go somewhere and go somewhere else and you start to piece together some of the threads of the fabric that is our actual planet. But I've been lucky enough to take sort of the best of our transportation technology that, that we've ever invented and to get on board a ship and go around the world in 92 minutes. To go around the world a hundred times and then a thousand times. And, and not just going around the world, but around the world 16 times a day where it turns underneath you. So every circumnavigation is like another voyage of discovery. And the angle between you and the sun and the world because of your speed is constantly changing. And the seasons are changing. I went from one side of the sun to the other, right across the solar system while I was on the space station, right around it. So you saw winter and summer swap ends on the world. And so each time around, you see the world slightly more for what it is, more clearly. And somewhere along the way, in one of those thousands of orbits, uh, I think you fundamentally, I don't know if it's shift or deepen or both, but you start to see the world as what it actually is. I feel hugely privileged to, have, without anybody telling me what to think, and without any filters in the way, to actually have seen the whole world over and over and over again until it seeped into me permanently. And it doesn't necessarily give me any outlandish insight or any outlandish imperative to change the world, but I think it does give me a perspective that I feel compelled to try and share 
to try and let as many other people. I, I was there on behalf of a lot of people. You know, it, it took a lot of lucre to, to build that rocket ship and accelerate my body to eight kilometers a second and let me stay there. And so I feel a responsibility to do my best to let other people see what's beyond their room based on the things that I've seen. As you mentioned at the outset, I flew on the space shuttle twice. Once to go help build the Russian space station Mir, um, and then on my second flight to go help build the International Space Station and do spacewalks. Uh, but on my third flight, you know, this wasn't just a week or two on board the space shuttle. This was launch as the pilot or the board engineer of the Soyuz and then stay in space for almost half a year. And it's not to belittle those initial shuttle flights. They were magnificent and hugely instructive to me. Uh, but I count myself hugely lucky to, at the end of all that, to have had a chance to go live off the planet for five months, to be asked to command the spaceship. So that level of, of, uh, of seriousness and responsibility, but also just the richness of, uh, of what comes along with that experience itself. You can read about a spacewalk or watch a movie of a spacewalk and you sort of get a sense of it. And then when you're on board a spaceship and you're floating weightless by the window, especially away of one bulging window, the cupola, so you can almost freely look around in, in 180 degrees, you get some sense of where you actually are. But the day that you, for real, are going to be on the other side of that window and, and you, you're going to assume the danger of it, you're going to put on this, build this spacesuit around your body and then go into a tiny bit of the ship and close a hatch behind you. You're going to become a torpedo and then take all the air out of that little part you're in and then open up the hatch and now actually physically pull yourself on the outside of the ship. That's entirely different. I spent my whole life visualizing it, dreaming about it, talking to guys who've done it, and then training and virtual reality training underwater. But suddenly, the part of your body that's in the sun is plus 150 Celsius, and you feel the searing heat of that. And the part of you that's in the shade is minus 140 Celsius. And so when your legs touch the, the, the fabric of the inflated suit, it's, it's like... Uh, growing up on a farm with super cold metal on a stovepipe, and you don't want to let it touch your skin because it's so uh, searingly cold. You feel the environment that you're in, and the world is silently, you can see an entire face of the whole planet uh, right across a continent, and it's right there beside you, and it's silently turning, and the whole universe is right here, and you're, you're in the middle holding on with one hand. It's extremely, visceral and physical and personal and intimate to be in the world uh, that way. I've been mean, hugely lucky and I think we collectively uh, are more liable to make good decisions for ourselves and for where we live the more clearly we can see the whole thing as, as one place. And you started posting these pictures on a whim really, taking these beautiful photographs from up in space because you see so many. Well, picture what it's like. You're there yeah. with a the camera and you're going around the world <laughs> and you float over to the window and you say, I'm not even going to take a picture today. It's, I just want to look at the world. And you're looking at something and you go, holy, and you, you, you got to grab the camera because there's, there's your, your emotions are trapped behind you. You can't keep up. And you go, I got to take a picture of this so I can look at it later. Responsibility that comes with, with being trusted with being an astronaut, I think, uh, it's been delightful to see the effect of it. I, I mean, I took, I think, 45,000 pictures over my three space flights. And after a year, I got back from landing. I was like, what are we going to do with all those photos? I mean, do we just let them sit in a file? I thought, why don't we take the best and put them in a book and, and then put why each picture meant something to me. This is just a sharing of the experience and, and let people then maybe see the world for what it truly is or at least a slightly clearer view or a more complete perspective rich view of the world. And then just like me as a nine-year-old boy, maybe they will then be a slightly different person with their choices.